glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all. That was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, thank you all so much. So, hello, y'all. Um, if you know me, then you know that I actually did used to be a teacher, um, but it was for kindergartners. So it is like ingrained in me to tell y'all to like crisscross applesauce and like zip your lips and you know, anyway. So um, this is definitely something that's new for me and um, I would much rather just sing instead of talk into a microphone. But um, Colton asked me to teach, so I'm going to do that. Um, we are going to be in Ephesians 3 tonight. Um, and so let's, let's just dig in. Uh, For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so Paul begins his prayer um, by saying, for this reason. And this is a reference to the first verse. I don't know if you remember, if you were here last week, Colton, it was kind of like Paul started a thought and then he just kind of stopped and paused. Well, now he's picking up back up to that thought. Um, So Colton taught on the first portion verses 2 through 13 last week, and it was this beautiful reminder of the church's role in God's cosmic plan. It was just this beautiful picture of what our role is to be as a church. Um, The first part of Ephesians focuses on that and God's vision for the church, and this week I'm focusing on Paul's prayer to, to close out Ephesians 3. So Paul begins with a request for power that comes from the Spirit living inside of us, The only way we obtain this inner strengthening is by Christ himself dwelling in our hearts. It is his continual presence that provides daily renewal. In 2 Corinthians 4.16, it even says that even when the outside seems to be wasting away, the inner person is being renewed day by day. So why does this matter? It matters because it's through the strengthening of this inner person by God's spirit and Christ and dwelling in our hearts that we are to be rooted in love. And this rooting in love happens so that we can comprehend the greatness of Christ's love and the fullness of God. So it matters that we are where we are rooted, because if we root ourselves in love, we can understand the fullness of God and see God's beautiful, God produced beautiful fruit in our lives. In John 15, 4, Jesus says, abide in me. Another, the message version actually says, live in me, make your home in me just as I do you in the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. So the health of our roots, our spiritual roots, are directly connected to our ability to bear fruit. Those two things are linked. Um, If love is to be the soil in which we grow, then it is crucial that we take time to just examine our spiritual roots and see, are my roots healthy? And what is it that they're absorbing? What nutrients are my roots absorbing? So I want to talk about healthy versus unhealthy plants. I actually brought some plants with me tonight because I just really like them. Um, And you can tell a lot about a plant by looking at its roots. So if you ever see me at some gardening place or nursery, you'll see I'll I'll be doing this. I pick up the plant out of the pot because I want to see what's going on underneath the surface. Um, So right here, this, this is actually from my house. I'm a little embarrassed. This, um, the roots are, it's all crumbly, like, it's, these roots aren't holding anything together. That's not good. That's not healthy. Um, another one that I didn't actually intend to bring any from my house tonight, but I realized some of mine aren't healthy. Um, so I pull, I, like, just to check this one out, pull this one out tonight, too, and see that action? That is not good. That, that means this, I should have replanted this plant a long time ago. It needs, and... It, like, if you, if you get close, it, it smells like death. It smells really bad. So this, this shows, like, it's trying to grow. Like, this is a good sign. But when I look underneath the surface, 
you see what's really going on, and there's some like black spots on the root. It's just, it's not in a healthy spot. Apparently, water had just been sitting in this for probably weeks. Like a huge, oh, it smells. Okay. I'm going to put this over there because that's nasty. Um, and then I actually bought these two today because I was like, I want to show them really healthy roots. So here's one. Look at that. That's so pretty. It's like the roots are holding the soil in place. They're a good color. That's like really good. And then last one. Yeah, I think last one. This one looks decent on top, right? But not that healthy. Like the roots have started growing up around it. It's just not, they don't look that strong. Not that great. So um, there are times where I have like gone to replant my own plants and then realized like this looks healthy, but I pull it up and I realize it's sick. And I had no idea it was sick until I brought it up to the surface. And it's the same way with our hearts. So more about roots because I love roots. So roots have two main jobs, to absorb the nutrients and water from the soil and then to hold the plant in place like an anchor. Plants actually make their own food, so they're not absorbing their food, they're absorbing nutrients. So I think of it like, think of it like vitamin. They're absorbing vitamins that are important for it to become a healthy plant. A plant cannot produce healthy fruit without the nutrients from the soil, good nutrients. So if Paul is saying that love should be our soil, I think that shows that we can get by and survive without being rooted in love, but we will not be fruitful without absorbing love into our lives. Just like um, if a plant doesn't get the nutrients it needs, it, it won't produce healthy fruit. So Paul prays that we would be grounded and established in love. It should be our anchor, just like the roots of a plant become an anchor for it. And why do we need an anchor? Anyone? To withstand storms is one reason. Trials and storms. I actually have an example that I want to show you of some weak roots. Um, this is an experiment called Biosphere 2. Uh, really, I just found out about this this week. It's really fascinating. Um, in the 1990s, some scientists created this perfect little ecosystem uh, where they had eight scientists, they were going to put them in there, sealed, airtight, they weren't supposed to leave for two years, and it was this little three-acre mini world in Arizona, and it was beautiful, right? Like, this little place that they made was beautiful, um, but one of the things they found out was that as time went on, the trees started to die, and they would just kind of grow to the certain height and then just die. So, like, that's crazy. Why? Anyone want to take a guess? Why? It does have to do with the roots. You're listening. Okay. Um, yes, it has to do with the roots. But there was no wind. So they created this supposedly perfect ecosystem for the, these beautiful plants to thrive. And there was no wind, though. And so they found out roots need wind. They need storms. And that's what causes them to dig down into the soil. So the wind is what is like the signal for the roots to dig down. I like how one website put it. Scientists found out that the wind actually provided the necessary stress the trees needed to grow strong and support themselves. So winds, storms cause roots to dig deeper. Um, that is how they become strong. And these trees were just falling over because they weren't even strong enough to hold themselves up. They would grow up to a certain height and then be like, oh, I'm done. I can't support myself anymore and just fall over. Um, so I believe Paul wants us to examine our roots and examine what we are rooted in. Um, there's three things that I think, three areas where I feel like we can root ourselves into if it's not love. And one is um, appetite, which isn't actually, I'm not actually talking about like just food. But someone who might be rooting themselves into their appetite might live and believe the lie that they will never have enough. Like, I will never have enough money. I will never have enough popularity. I will never have enough knowledge, sex, fill in the blank, like whatever it is. So you dig yourself down into this appetite, and you spend your life working towards accumulating more of this thing that you desire, thinking that will satisfy you, that will fill you. Another area is ambition. Someone rooted in their ambition believes the core lie that I will never accomplish enough. 
I will never be blank enough. I will never be successful enough. I will never be talented enough. I will never be handsome or pretty enough. And so you dig your roots down into the soil of trying to um, succeed and, and you worry so much about your appearance. Uh, a lot of times those can be linked. And then the third one I have grouped together is approval. Are you rooted in your need for approval? So someone rooted in this might believe, I will never be enough. So you, di you dig yourself down into the soil of people-pleasing and trying to gain approval and doing whatever you can to just make people happy. All of these, these three things make terrible, horrible anchors, and they will not nourish you. Spoiler alert, they will not. They will lead you to, um, I mean, one thing that popped up was, I feel like some of them can lead to addiction. One area being addictive shopping, that came to mind. Because if you feel like, oh, if I just have this, I'll be happy. If I have this, I'll be satisfied. So you end up buying, buying, buying more than you can really afford to spend and just racking up the credit card debt. And not that you all have credit cards, but you, you get what I'm saying. Um, thinking, if I just have this thing, I will be happy. If I just have like a whole new wardrobe, like I'll feel good about myself. Things like that. Um, and then just, or even like sending pics that you, pictures to people that, you know, you probably shouldn't send any, maybe you don't even really want to, but you feel like, oh, if I send this picture, he'll think I'm beautiful or I'll feel beautiful. Something like that. Um, so the only type of soil that will fully satisfy is the soil of Christ's love. Psalms 1-3 says, He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in, season, in its season, and its leaves do not wither. And whatever he does, he prospers. So that is the true way to prosper. By living in Christ's love and being rooted there, that means being fully known and fully loved. So I'm not looking to others for approval I'm not looking for awards and trophies and all that to make me feel loved and valued. I live, oh, sorry, I live from this knowledge that I am deeply loved by God. I'm a mess, but I am deeply loved by God, and I can live from that acceptance. Okay, so I showed you an example of weak roots. Now I want to show you what strong, healthy roots look like and what they can do. So this is an image of St. Paul's Chapel, which stood directly across the street from the World Trade Center. Um, it was built in the 1760s, super old. George Washington even attended services there. And everyone thought that it would have been flattened by the force of the towers falling on September 11th. There was actually a church nearby that was flattened um, that I found, I found out as I was reading all this. But when church leaders made it to the building that day, they were amazed to find it completely unscathed. They had an engineer even come check it out just to make sure there wasn't any hidden damage unseen, like underground or whatever. Maybe not underground, I don't know. But they had an engineer who knew what he was doing, I'm sure. Come check it out. And that person found nothing wrong. Not even a pane of glass was broken. And this old sycamore tree is what is believed to have protected the church that day. Can you go back to the one that had the tree? There we go. That tree is what is believed to have protected the church that day. So in the days following 9-11, the church opened its doors to people doing recovery work. Firefighters, policemen would come in and rest and take their gear off. Volunteers would bring them food, cooked meals. The church was staffed 24-7 with volunteers so that recovery workers would have a place to go. Over the next eight months, 3,000 workers came to the chapel. Beds were brought in and food and clothes were donated to the workers. It became known, this is my favorite part, it became known as the little chapel that stood. Isn't that adorable? And now it welcomes more than one million visitors a year. And all of this because of a sycamore tree with strong, healthy roots that helped protect this fragile church. So I just feel like that is so beautiful and such a beautiful picture that when we root ourselves deep down into Christ's love and we have healthy roots, we can not only grow tall and strong to withstand our own storms, but we can also protect the vulnerable, like this church, and bring life and blessing to others during their storms. That's what deep, healthy roots will give you, a strong tree with beautiful fruit to bless a broken world deeply, deeply hungry for nourishment. So I said, I mentioned earlier that plants make their own food. So just as a reminder, what is the fruit for if we're supposed to produce fruit? Like, that's not for us because we make we plants, you know, the whole analogy. Plants make their own food. So the fruit that we are to produce is for others. It's for others. So how do we root ourselves into love? One, we just meditate on God's word. 
Um, in some cultures, meditation is all about emptying your mind, and that's kind of the goal. But in Christianity, we are supposed to meditate, but it's different. We're supposed to fill our mind with truth and, and fill our mind with his truth. So it's, it's very different. But um, just simply meditate on God's word. Read his word. Study his word. Memorize his word. And then two, link up with other believers because you are not meant to walk this Christian life alone. Like You're not meant to do this by yourself. I have one more... Um, tree analogy, <laughs> because I love all the trees, and it's about redwood trees and then sequoia trees. So these are the ones, this is on my bucket list. I've never seen these in real life, but I really want to. Um, they're massive, like they can be taller than, some are taller than the Statue of Liberty. That's how tall they are. Um, and they can live to be over 2,000 years old. I think one is 2,500 years old. How they know that, I don't know. But um, so that I found out in studying these massively, you'd think, like, obviously they're strong. One picture shows a guy, it looks like he's like, there. Like, it's like he's mountain climbing, like, so massive. Um, so you would think that they have just the deepest roots, right? But they're, I found out they're actually kind of shallow compared to what you would expect. Um, but the thing that's interesting about sequoia tree roots is they're interconnected. Um, so that when one tree is weakened for whatever reason or it's struggling, these other roots from other trees will send nourishment to the one that needs it. Like, that was so wild to me. And I love that. I feel like it's a picture of how we are to be to each other. Like, we are supposed to be this community of believers that, oh, you're struggling? Okay, I'm going to send, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to do all that I can to send some nourishment your way. And then hopefully, if when I'm struggling, you can do the same thing for me. Um, but just this beautiful picture of what the church is supposed to be. Finally, so just to reiterate, um, we root ourselves into God's love by meditating on his word and then connecting with other believers. So finally, Paul ends his prayer by saying that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So this rooting down into love is essential knowing Christ, to knowing Christ's love and to being filled with the fullness of God. I love this quote by John Stott um, in relation to the, the dimensions that he just mentioned. Um, God's love is broad enough to encompass all mankind long enough to last for eternity, deep enough to reach the most degraded sinner, and high enough to exalt him to heaven. I, and that just, in my mind, makes me picture a cross and such a beautiful picture of what Jesus did. So my questions for you are, how is your root system? Is it healthy? Unhealthy, if you're honest? Like, how are your spiritual roots? Are they shallow? Are they growing deeper? And then, ultimately, like, the main one is, what are you rooting yourself into? Are you rooting yourself into the soil of ambition, appetite, or your need for approval? Or God's love? I want to close with the last few verses of Ephesians 3. Paul ends with this beautiful prayer where he just basically brags on God and says how he can do anything. It's just a beautiful reminder. And I want to read the message version. It says, God can do anything you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah in Jesus Glory down all the generations. Glory through all millennia. Amen. We're going to close with um, a worship song, Build My Life. And as we do that, as we sing through this, I would love for you to just reflect, take some time before we go to our small group to really think, like, ask God, show me, God, where am I seeking, where's my main source of nourishment coming from? Is it from you or is it from all these other things? And then, just take some time to reflect and talk to God as we sing.
Y'all can stand. Sorry. <laughs>